Hi there, Cal B, and uh, welcome to another video. Uh, this, uh, this video is going to focus in on using inverse trig functions and integration. So earlier in the week, we talked about how we use, uh, how we can use the inverse trig functions to solve some problems. We also talked about how we derive them, and we got some formulas for differentiation. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, okay, so if that's what we can do to differentiate them, then there must be some link then to anti-differentiation. And there it is. So I'm going to move over to a screen share here. And what we're going to look at is how we can use the, uh, the formulas that we saw for deriving as a tool for integration. So for example, um, you know, we, we saw earlier you know, dy dx. Um, well, let me, uh, sorry, let me, let me back that up. There you go. Of arc sine of x was one over the square root of one minus x squared. Okay. Well, so what that must mean then is that the integral of one over the square root of one minus x squared dx must in fact equal arc sine of x plus our constant integration. Okay, and that's exactly right. Okay, um, however, you know, when we were looking at our our uh, functions earlier, you know, we, we looked at, so what if it's not just arc sine of X, what if it's arc sine of some other function of X, arc sine of U? Well, then of course the chain rule comes into play and we learned that that's gonna be U prime over the square root of one minus U squared. Okay, so for us to use that integration then, um, obviously we're talking about integrating, you know, uh, du over the square root of one minus u squared being the arc sine of u plus c. So we want to see that derivative of that function u as part of the integral. Uh, and we can actually go a little bit further back. We can say, well, what if it's not a one in there? How does that impact our, our formula? And we get, we land on our final uh, formula, which is, you know, if you want to integrate and you have a squared minus u squared. Okay, so there's a constant inside there, uh, inside the radical with the u squared, and we have du on top. Then what we say is that is gonna be the arc sine of u over a. Plus our constant of integration. Um, similarly, uh, you, can, you can show that with a with a, uh, a constant of A in there. Um, if we have A squared plus U squared. Okay. Now, which one of the inverse trig functions had a derivative that looks sort of like that, right? Um, if you're thinking, hey, you know, I remember what arctan's derivative looked like, you would be exactly right. The difference is now we have arctan of u over a here. And my third formula while I'm here, let's just put this on here. This is arc secant. So these are the three main formulas that we're gonna be using today for anti-deriving using inverse trig functions. Okay, um, it's, it's a lot of pattern recognition, kind of like, you know, integration has a lot of that to it. Uh, it's not very rules-based, right? I mean, I've said this multiple times, especially to my, my Calc students, that where derivatives are great. Derivative, you've got a rule, and you apply that rule, and you apply that rule the same way every single time. Every time you see that, you go for it, okay? Integration just doesn't work like that, guys, and it's, it's, there's more of an art form to it, and this is just one more tool that we can use as part of the art form for creating our, our uh, uh, toolbox that we come to when we see an integral. 
Okay, when you encounter an integral out in the wild, okay, it's not nice and neatly tucked in a section on inverse trig functions. So um, it's hard to know exactly how do we how do we approach that integral. Uh, and even calculus teachers, right? We've been doing calculus for a long time. Um, you know, Ms. Hoagie and I is is uh, considerably younger than I am, um, but she's probably way better at calculus than I am, even though I've been doing calculus for uh, probably more years, and I still screw this up. Okay, so there's lots of reasons why um, integration is difficult. Oh, look at that. All right, so let's continue on here. Um, what I'd like to do is do an example here for you with some actual numbers, because I find those are pretty nice. Uh, so my example number one uh, is a pretty straightforward example. It just says, uh, suppose we were trying to integrate and we have the function dx over square root of four minus x squared. So which one of these does it fit the best? Well. But what I want you to look at is the order of the subtraction in the radical, okay? Because notice for arc sine up here, okay, we, we see a squared minus u squared. A squared is constant, u is the function. And how do I know that? Because it says du up here in the numerator. So a must be some unknown constant. So when it's the constant minus the function squared, we're typically going to think, okay, I'm going to try and see if that fits an arc sign. Okay. Notice in arc tangent, there's no square root down here. So it's a sum of two things in the denominator and there's no, um, there's no radical. So it, we typically tend to think, okay, this is probably an arc tan. The last one, look at the order of subtraction inside the radical. We have u squared minus a squared. So that's a good indicator that I'm going to be having a function squared minus a constant squared. That's an arc secant. Okay. So when you look at the example one here, what do you see? Well, you see a constant minus a function squared. Okay. So does that fit our pattern? Well, sure. Right. Because four is two squared minus X squared. So this is simply arc sine of x over two plus our constant of integration. And there we go. Okay. Um, you know, if I look at example two and I say, well, let's do the integral of dx over two plus nine x squared. Okay, hopefully right away you're going, whoa, no radical on that one. Right? There's no square root, so this is probably an arctan. You'd be thinking correctly. Uh, what I like to do with these ones is say, okay, well, what is actually being squared here? That's the square root of two squared. Okay, what's being squared? Sorry, all my alerts for bear time are coming through. In the next one, well, that's three x being squared. Okay. And the reason I do that is I want to make sure that I have du in the numerator, right? If you look at our arctan function, right? There we go. If we look at that, we, we see, oh, look, in the numerator's gotta be du. So whatever's being squared down here, we gotta make sure that we have the derivative of that in the numerator. And notice we don't in this case, right? If, if u is three x, du is three dx, and I need a three, so. I'm going to make a, a constant 3dx in the numerator by multiplying by 3 and one third simultaneously. Now, that's nice because that means we have one third times the integral of a du over a squared plus u squared. So that's 1 over a arctan u over a. I got my plus C on there and I'm running out of space. So there we go. <laughs> Didn't space that one out very well. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so there we go. That's how, that's how these formulas can work. Um, sometimes it won't be as obvious. Okay. Let me take you to example three here. Um, this one, this one's a little tricky. Okay. Because here we go. We've got dx over the square root 
and it's got e to the 2x in here, minus one. Well, right off the bat, guys, I, I'm going, okay, um, I see this radical. I've got e to the 2x minus one. I don't really, I don't really see my my squared or anything in there. And that's because I got to remember that the, the rules for exponents, right? e to the 2x, that's e to the x quantity squared. Okay. So now I go, oh, okay, I, that is a function squared. Um, but it's the function squared minus the constant. So let me scroll back up for a second here. The function squared minus the constant, that is, that's sort of leaning towards an arc, arc secant, right? Okay, but there's a couple things missing, right? Um, where's this guy? Where's the, the, the U that's supposed to be out front? Well, and more importantly, I also don't have DU yet, right? So let's take a look and see if we can't do a little U substitution to see if we can help ourselves clear this thing up here. So, um, and that would be my, my advice on a, on a problem like this is to really think, okay, maybe, maybe what I wanna do here is say, well, I'm gonna let u equal e to the x. So I can just get that e, because e to the x just, to me, it looks like, oh, wow, that really complicates things. Okay, and, and it does really complicate things. So what is du? Oh, it's e to the x dx, right? Oh. I don't have e to the x dx in there. And I know I'm really not supposed to bring in powers of or, or, or the variable, right? Because I can't put a variable inside the, I can't bring in you know, a variable in inside the integral in here and then put one outside. That's not allowed. I can't bring the variable outside. So um, yeah, so what am I gonna do here? Well, I, you know, let's do this since what I actually have in the integral is dx, right? Let's solve for dx. Okay, and so now I have that dx is equal to du over e to the x. Hey guys, e to the x is u. So check this out. What I've got How's that look? Looks like an arc secant now, doesn't it? Yeah, just by doing this little u substitution and by this little, little divide by e to the x and recognizing that that's actually just moving the u to the other side, I now have created a nice, pretty much perfect arc secant. That is arc secant of u. And now we can back substitute and get arc secant of e to the x plus c. And um, there we go. So that's a great example of how we might use that stuff. All right, guys, little algebra timeout here for a second. We're gonna need to review an algebra skill uh, that comes in a lot here in this section. Uh, we, we see this quite a bit. So this is called when you complete the square. I know, oh my gosh, I thought we were done with algebra. That was way back in algebra one. Sorry, it's still a thing. So just a quick review, right? When you wanna complete the square, You try to get your trinomial to fit this pattern. X squared plus BX plus B over two quantity squared. Because then you know that it's factorable into X plus B over two quantity squared. Okay, so let's remind ourselves how this works, right? So if, for example, I have X squared plus... Uh, 6x minus 2. 
Oh, well, that's not a completed square, is it? Okay. No. So what do we do? All right. We're gonna we're gonna make a little room here. All right. Put the minus two over here. And what number would we just love to see added right here? Right. We want a nine, right? We want a nine there. That'd be a nice, perfect square trinomial. So I've added nine. So I will simultaneously subtract nine. So now I have a perfect square trinomial right here. That's x plus three quantity squared. This is minus an 11 out here. But now you can see how completing the square might become kind of useful for us as we start thinking about how do we get these, uh, these integrals to sort of match up with the formulas that we have. So quick review of completing the square there because to do example number, what am I on, four here? Yeah. Uh, to be able to do example number four, I'm gonna need that skill. I'm just gonna let the cat out of the bag right now and say, look, here's what I've got. I've got dx and then in the denominator, I've got a trinomial, x squared minus four x plus seven. And you know, without, without inverse trig functions, I would be really stuck on this. Okay, because there's no way to split this up. There's no division we can do. There's, it's, no, it's not a U prime over U pattern. There's none of that. So what do I need to do? I'm going to try completing the square in the denominator to see if this doesn't end up looking like one of my inverse trig functions. So completing the square becomes a very important uh, technique when we're working with integration. Okay, so like I said, we're going to make a little room here. And we're going to say, gosh, what number should we have in this blank right here? Wouldn't four be nice? Because that would be a nice, perfect square trinomial right there, right? Yeah. Well, if I add four and I subtract four at the same time, I really added zero. So that's good. And check it out. This is now our perfect square. So I've got dx over x minus two quantity squared plus three because negative four when you put that with the positive seven you get three. Oh, look it's u squared plus a squared this is an arctan of course right this this three is really the square root of three being squared so this is one over the square root of three arc tangent of x minus two, that quantity over square root of three plus our constant of integration, C. Um, so that, that technique, um, using completing the square to create the u squared plus a squared, that works inside the radicals as well. Okay, if you, if you have one that you think, oh gosh, that kind of looks like um, maybe I should do a completing the square, but it's inside a radical, you can still do it. You can still do it. Um, if, if we saw uh, dx over uh, the square root of 3x minus x squared, you know, I got, oh, that kind of looks like maybe it's an arc sine, maybe, maybe it's an arc secant, I don't know. But I got a, I got parts of a trinomial down there that I really would like to complete the square because then maybe it'd be a u prime over u pattern. If I could square the, and square root whatever that perfect square is, maybe that would work. Let's try it. But remember, this is negative x squared, right? And what do we want the coefficient to be whenever we're doing a completing the square? You want it to be a positive one. So I'm gonna need to factor that negative out of there. Oops. So I've got x squared minus three X. So what do I really, really, really wanna see added right here? Well, we really, really, really wanna see a nine fourths, right? Okay, remember, cause it's B over two. So if B is three, cause that half, that's three halves squared is nine fourths. So we're gonna add nine fourths. But remember, are we really adding nine fourths? No, because this minus sign is operating on this whole trinomial. That's actually a negative nine fourths. 
So we're simultaneously going to add nine fourths outside of the radical as well. So let's see what we got. I've got a square root. I've got nine fourths, which is three halves squared minus, look, it's X minus three halves quantity squared. It's a perfect square trinomial, just exactly what we wanted. And now it's a very nice arc sign, right? It's U squared, sorry, it's A squared minus U squared. That's a classic. We like it. Arc sine of, hmm, x minus 3 halves over 3 halves plus c. And uh, I can only imagine that uh, you were thinking, oh my gosh, that's disgusting. That's a complex fraction. Shouldn't we just fix that stuff inside there? And you certainly are welcome to do that. Um, but this is, uh, this is a fine answer right here. And that's basically it, guys. That's, that's using our patterns that we've been working on for deriving now in reverse. And we're integrating with the uh, three main functions here. Oops. It goes back on the screen. There we go. For inverse trig functions. Um, a few examples there. I'm sure Ms. Hoagie will have some more examples she would like to go through with you. I have some more examples I'll be going through with my students in uh, class. Um, I will just end by saying, if you check out page 391, so if you go to your textbook and check out page 391, we have now completed the um, basic integrals table. So page 391, basic integrals. Yeah, there's 20 of them there. And these are the basic integration rules. Uh, usually my students are like, does that mean we have to memorize this? Yes, you do. <laughs> these are the basic ones. You have to know these 20. Um, don't worry, uh, you don't have to memorize them tonight. Okay, but these are the ones that we should be able to call up from memory um, pretty easily. So uh, it takes a while to be able to do that. Yeah, you got to practice with it some more. So don't worry, you don't have to memorize it tonight, like I said, but these are the basics and we definitely use them all the time. So um, with that, I think I will just say, uh, thanks so much for checking out our video today, guys. Uh, it was my pleasure to put this together for you. Uh, if you have questions, come on in and ask them sometime. All right, see you guys.